morning, this is David Johnson. Um, today I'd just like to show you a very simple optimization for a composite laminate. In this case I'm showing our honeycomb sandwich. So <clears throat> if we just go through, this is the project sizing form we do all of our work. If we just go through each of these tabs and just look at what we've done here and then we'll just show you the results. So this is the dimensions tab and as I have this this uh, laminate set up to be a minimum of 30 thou and a maximum of a, of a tenth but right now in theory I don't know have any clue how thick this laminate needs to be. I have a core of 1.25 I'm not really optimizing the core depth at this point although I could do and the bottom face is between 0.03 to 0.1 and I've used 5,000 steps. I've only asked for now for one design and as you can see I've got 5,625 candidates. Just to show here what I've done is yeah, Collier has effective laminates and discrete laminates. When we first start to do optimization it's much better to use an effective laminate. In effect it's just an orthotropic shell structure of a certain thickness with, with E E1, E2 properties, etc., in the different directions. Right now, I don't really want to know the exact layout because there's just too many permutations. So, what we do is we pick, we optimize with a laminate, which we'll show later, and once we get into the right ballpark, then we'll do discrete laminates and say the actual material and layups because it, we've, we've narrowed down the problem and now we can pick some thicknesses of laminates that are going to solve the problem. So these effective laminates are simply a material and the percentages of 45 zeros and 90s. And you can see here I've picked four, ranging from 70% zeros to 0%. This is not a real, probably shouldn't choose this one, but I'll change it. We should never have less than 10% plies in any one direction. So I apply that, uh, so I'm going to look at those four laminates, effective laminates, on both my upper skin and my lower skin. And for now all I'm doing is optimizing this, just this one component. So this is just a very simple example. The failure tab, as always we've got this huge number of analysis to pick from. Um, I'll just hide the unselected for now, so it's kind of discussion. Still I think I much prefer to hide a lot of these, it just makes life difficult. But what I've done is, and maybe I'll sort of, obviously I've already done this analysis with the because I've got the margins here already, but in theory these wouldn't show up. Composites, it's pretty much all ultimate analysis. We're not really going to click in here unless we've got some displacement uh, criteria. So what I've asked for, <coughs> in essence, <coughs> is composite strength and wrinkling and dimpling strength. That's all I've selected for now. We could add some buckling and maybe some flatwise tension if it was curved. I just want to keep this, this simple. Originally I had FEA loads, what I've done is I've put in some, some loads manually and we have different loads for strength analysis and buckling analysis. And as you can see really my driver is MX, I put a little bit of axial load and I put some shear load and I put a little bit of load for the core here, QX is basically out of plane shear on the core. We have the panel dimensions, and if I was doing block analysis, I'd have this clip, but we're not actually doing that today. FEA loads, these are the results from the previous. Probably go over these in a, in a little bit, but the main thing is I've got no, the main thing here is, I guess it doesn't matter right now. I normally have element-based loads, but in this case, I've put loads in manually. We can get the stresses, the buckling I've set up, two free edges and two simple support. I put in a curved panel, I'm not doing flatwise tension analysis. Wow. 
let's go back to the dimensions tab and as you can see I've set up a preliminary optimization and in this case I'm only going to size just this one component just for this analysis example and what it shows is is that the skin on the bottom should be 030 thou and the skin on the top should be 045 and what it's saying here is it prefers 70% zeros, 20% 45s, and only 10% 90 for the top and also for the bottom skins. And if we look in the failure tab here, or perhaps let's look at the loads first. The reason that it's showing a lot of zeros is because I put in a very large MX. So MX is driving, so what I have is a lot of axial load and if you look in the failure the top face the critical margin is composite strength in the x direction and if you look at the bottom face you'll see a, a, a little bit bigger margin but the top skin needs to be thicker because we've got a lower compressive allowable and that's why it's in a dimension statement it's showing I need a thicker laminate on the top than I do on the bottom now let's just say, let's go and look for three solutions instead of two. And I do an analysis again, 3600 candidates. Obviously it came up with the same design, 045 on the top and 030 on the bottom. And if I look for all designs, quite here now it's showing in detail on the top skin I need this IM7 with 20% 45, 70% 0, 10% 90. On the bottom, it's selected a different laminate. It's gone for the 60% 0 and a 20% 90. Now that's for solution one. A hypersize has stored two other solutions here that you may prefer to use. So for example here it said, oh, for a very small amount of weight difference I have the same laminates for the top and bottom. Now manufacturing may prefer to have the two laminates the same, also you might prefer to have a, a balanced uh, sandwich structure. So this very little weight penalty you might pick that option. And option number three this one has gone for 60% 90, that's quite unusual, but oh, with a different skin thickness, 030 and 050. Actually, I didn't notice that the first time around, so go back to this one. Yeah, the second solution was 050 on the top and, and uh, 030 on the bottom. So this is a pretty simple example. Once you've determined these effective laminates the next step would be to do a discrete laminate and to actually pick some pick a material and actually determine some laminates which are in that thickness range of 030 to 050 and do a secondary optimization to actually determine the final solution so this discrete laminate method is very useful because it just gets us into the right ballpark before we start doing some really detailed optimization in summary, Hypersize is a very powerful tool. The objective of this uh, lesson was really just to show the general capabilities and to show that effective laminates are a good way to start and to use discrete laminates once we've dialed in the solution. Thanks for your time and uh, have a good day.